In celebration of Black History Month, tonight's five-star story dives deeper into the history behind the home of the blues. In particular, the father of the blues and the legacy that changed the course of popular music. Here's Kim Clark. If Memphis is the home of the blues, then Bill Street is its epicenter. In the early 1900s, that iconic street was filled with black-owned businesses and entertainment venues, a hub and safe haven in the segregated South. But Bill Street was where uh, black community felt like first-class citizens. They could come to Bill Street and they could walk in the front door of a movie theater. They could go in a restaurant and actually sit down and eat. Elaine Turner, president of Heritage Tours in Memphis, said it's also where William Christopher Handy began something that had never been done before. Of course, you know, the blues had been sung for years in the cotton fields of Tennessee, Mississippi, all over the South, but nobody uh, documented it. So that was Handy's uh, contribution to blues. He actually documented the blues and then he wrote blues as well. In 1909, Handy moved his wife and five children into this two-room shotgun home on Jeanette Place in South Memphis, which was relocated in 1985 to Beale Street. When the house was first moved here, the Blues Foundation had their office right here. This simple wood cabin in Alabama is where W.C. Handy was born in 1873, the son and grandson of devout Methodist ministers. You know, Handy's foundation was in the church. He played uh, the organ in his father's church in a AME church, St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church in Florence, Alabama. Handy left Florence in 1896 playing cornet and trumpet in Chicago before heading back to Alabama years later for a bandmaster's position at the Agricultural and Mechanical College for Negroes. 1903, he left his birth home again for Clarksdale, Mississippi to direct the Knights of Pythias Band. Six years later, he was invited to Memphis. And uh, he had a pretty good reputation as a band leader. An organization here in Memphis needed a band. Handy's name was the one that was suggested. Handy performed, wrote music, and eventually opened up his own music publishing house, also on Beale. Well, sometimes he would write music. He would take it to a white publishing company, and they would tell him, oh, nobody wants to uh, buy that music if they know it's written by a black man. And so he realized he had to do his own publishing. And so he and his partner, Harry Pace, uh, they started their music publishing company right here in Memphis. And he also published music for other black musicians from all over the country, protecting their rights as he did his own. In his old shotgun house that's now open for tours, sits the desk on which he wrote much of his music. So it's our pride right here in this museum because it's an original piece that handed touch where he worked, where he composed and wrote music. And as being an accomplished musician himself, he was able to write the music, write the parts of the music, and distribute it by sheet music, and then other bands could play it from everywhere. And so that's why his name is attached to the blues. Bringing international fame to Memphis with his Beale Street Blues and Memphis Blues, a piece that was originally written as a campaign song for E.H. Crump. It was Mr. Crump, but since everybody likes the song so well, uh, he decided to keep the music, change the words. Handy left Memphis for good in 1918, but the city remained grateful for the recognition his music brought to the city and in 1931 named this park after him. It was one of the first parks uh, in the city to be named for an African-American. The statue uh, was placed there in 1960. Handy had passed away two years before. Memphis and the music industry still reaps the rewards of W.C. Handy's influence. Well, I think the lesson that you learn with W.C. Handy is his perseverance. He knew that he had something to share with the world and he was determined to do that. Kim Clark, Action News 5. All right, W.C. Handy's home on Beale Street is open to visitors and it serves as an interpretive center operated by Heritage Tours and the annual W.C. Handy Heritage Awards are held on Handy's birthday, November 16th. For more information, you can click this link to this story on our website, actionnews5.com.